Preston Physics Grade 11 Kinematics Note 12 Derivation of the Five Motion Formulas In class today, we derived the five motion formulas and where they come from. We're now going to look at the chart as it sets all the formulas up and shows us when we're able to use them. The first formula is V equals D over T. It only contains distance and time. It also has velocity, but it's only for constant velocity. The second equation we're going to look at is A equals V2 minus V1 over T. It contains everything except for displacement. The third equation is D equals V1T times 1 half AT squared. It doesn't contain V2. The next equation does contain V2, but not V1, being D equals V2T minus 1 half AT squared. And finally, we have V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2AD. Now, all of these formulas can become very overwhelming. In physics, we use what's called the GRASS method. It's very useful for solving problems involving all of these formulas. The first letter is G, standing for given information. The second letter, the R, means required information. The third letter, the A, is appropriate formula. It's very important that we use the right formula when we're solving these problems. The first S stands for substitution, to put all of our information into the formula. The second S stands for solve. And the final S stands for statement. Now let's apply this method to the first example that we have, where we have a car passing a truck on the 401. The first thing we need to do is put down our given and required information. This is often one step. So we have an acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared. We have a time of 4.5 seconds, and we have a final velocity of 130 kilometers per hour. Now we have to change that to meters per second because that's what we have our acceleration in. So it becomes 36.11 meters per second. We don't know our displacement, and that's what we're trying to find. We've established that forward is our positive direction. Now we look at our chart using all of the information we're given and what we required. We have the last three columns and we need the first column, so it's the second last equation. We then state our equation so that we know what we're substituting into. We then sub in our values. Here we're not putting in any units because we've already included them in our given and required information and they only need to be included once. We then solve for our final displacement, which is 154.4 meters, and put a statement, the displacement being 154.4 meters that the cars traveled to pass the truck. We're going to leave the second example for you to try on your own, and we're going to move on to the third example where we have the astronaut throwing a baseball straight up in the air. This example has a little trick to it, so we're going to do it together. First, again, we state all our given and required information. Our acceleration is 1.6 meters per second squared. Our velocity, 1, is 4.5 meters per second. Our time is 4 seconds. And our velocity, 2, we don't know. We start to draw our diagram of the ball going straight up in the air. We show it a little bit off to the side so we can see the motions. We have 4.5 meters per second as our starting point. Now we're going to make up positive and down negative. Therefore, our acceleration has to be negative because it's going down towards the ground. When we look at our chart to find the formula, we find that A equals V2 minus V1 over T is the formula we need. We sub in our values, rearrange the formula to solve for V2. We then find that V2 is equal to negative 1.9 meters per second. Because our answer is a negative, we know that the ball is on its way down. Therefore, we can state the final velocity of the ball after 4 seconds is negative 1.9 meters per second or 1.9 meters per second down. The questions associated with this note are numbers 28 to 46 in your yellow duotangs. Be sure that you use proper form and take your time when you're answering these questions to make sure you're getting them right.